Hi, this is uh, the first of a couple of videos I'm doing on the Velvet Underground, one of my favorite rock bands. And the members, uh, if you look at the picture on the left, are Lou Reed, Sterling Morrison, John Cale, and on the bottom is Nico and Mo Tucker. And they defined New York City cool and were the reason other bands Members of other bands moved to New York to become part of the New York scene. People like uh, Deborah Harry from Blondie and David Byrne from Talking Heads. And they wanted to be where it was at because the Velvet Underground was making New York City look really cool. But what's interesting about the Velvet Underground is uh, they're really, they were really mostly from Long Island. Three of the members were from Long Island and two were from Europe. So Lou Reed was born in Brooklyn, but the family moved out to Long Island and that's where he graduated from high school. So one of the things I will show in this video is where they went to high school, the ones that are from the New York area. So Lou Reed uh, graduated from Freeport High School in 1959 and Sterling Morrison and Mo Tucker both graduated from Division Avenue High School in Levittown, uh, Sterling in 1960 and Mo in 1961. And uh, then they met John Cale in New York City. And John Cale, who is from Wales, he's only a week younger than Lou Reed, so they were all roughly the same age. And then when uh, they got involved with Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol wanted them to play with Nico, who was a German model. And she was a little bit older than the other members of the band, like three and a half years older. And she was uh, born and spent her early years in Cologne, Germany, and then moved with her mother after the war to Berlin before coming to New York City. So I'm gonna take you to each of the high schools that the three from Long Island went to, and also to the high school that they played at, their first paid gig as a, the original four members of the band in Summit, New Jersey, in December of 1965. And uh, it was when they were in their early 20s so it's interesting that you graduate from college, you're getting started in New York City and everything, but your first gig is back at a high school in the suburbs. So it's an interesting way for this band to start. I think it was the last high school they ever played at, and they played at a lot of different places after that. But let's go take a look at the high schools that we're talking about in the New York City area. Here's Freeport High School, where Lou Reed graduated in 1959. We'll see if there's any notes or plaques that uh, commemorate his graduating from here. Well, here's the main entrance of Freeport High School. Can't tell you whether it's uh, much changed from when he went here. It's kind of a older architectural style. Um, I don't see any plaques of that mention their most famous graduate. But we'll, we'll keep looking around. Well, if uh, neighbor do decide to put a plaque here on Freeport High School, it's right on the border of Baldwin, Long Island. Right off of Sunrise Highway, that's where I'm standing right now. So, there's the high school that Lou Reed went to. And he wrote in one of his songs, Rock and Roll, that nothing was happening at all. Not at all. So, you can't go by a high school where somebody went. We are at the uh, second important high school on Long Island. 
as relates to the Velvet Underground, and that's Division Avenue High School here in Levittown, where two of the band members graduated, Sterling Morrison in 1960 and Mo Tucker in 1961. So we're about uh, 20, 25 minutes away from Freeport High School where Lou Reed graduated. So this is basically it. There's no plaque here that I can see. I've heard about Division Avenue High School. Another um, rocker that came from Levittown was Eddie Money, but he went to the other high school in town, Island Trees. And uh, Billy Joel went to high school not too far away from here in Hicksville, which is one of the next towns over. So anyway, this is where Sterling and Mo went. If you're not familiar with Long Island, um, this is right across the street. It's typically what Long Island looks like. And the island is pretty much flat as a pancake. So the group Dawes wrote a song called Time Spent in Los Angeles. And one of the lines from that song is, when people ask me where I come from to see what that says about a man and uh, and they lead them in the wrong directions. So Mo and uh, Sterling didn't stay in Levittown. Um, they both went south. Sterling went to Texas and but came back to the New York area, New York State he uh, passed away in Poughkeepsie, in the Hudson Valley. And Mo Tucker, from what I've read, she lives now in rural Georgia. So, both a long ways away from Long Island. So this is the advertisement flyer for the concert that uh, you have to look closely to see where it lists the Velvet Underground. They were the second act. They followed a, a group of, I think, very young musicians called the Forty Fingers. But the main act was a group called the Middle Class. And uh, I don't know where they are today, but uh, it only cost $2.50 to see all three bands. But the Velvet Underground played their own kind of music uh, in the middle. And supposedly the auditorium that was full was only half full when they were done because half the people left. They were in shock, but the other half were thrilled. And uh, so then the middle class came and played the final set. But this is uh, where they got started at Summit High School in Summit, New Jersey. It's a Western suburb of New York City, nice suburb. Um, about as far out from New York City to the west as Long Island is to the east. Now this is the uh, high school where the Velvet Underground first played their first concert back in 1965, I want to say. Let's see if there's any plaque that indicates they played. It was in December and they were on a bill with two other bands. They weren't the uh, lead band. I think the lead band was some group called the Middle Class and um, they were the second and they only played two or three songs which I think included Heroin and Venus in Furs and from what I read it left half the audience in shock and the other half thrilled and uh, that's the start of one of the greatest bands in rock history probably no 
designation of such an event here. I'm sure this school has been remodeled many times and expanded and modernized. And maybe the original auditorium doesn't exist anymore, but we'll take a look. Here's the Summit High School Gymnasium with the lettering that looks like it could be from the 1960s. But uh, we'll see if any part of the high school looks like it's still from the 1960s when they were here. Just to give you some flavor of uh, the town of Summit, New Jersey, it's very nice. Beautiful homes along this street in particular um, that the high school is on. Lots of old Victorians that had to have been here back in the day um, in the 1960s. So, but as far as any kind of remaining theater, I did see one part of the high school that looked like it was where the auditorium is where they performed on a stage, but this high school has probably been modernized and expanded so many times it doesn't look hardly anything like uh, it looked in the mid-60s when they first played here. Another uh, historical note um, in talking about Summit High School, um, the band was all lined up to play, but the uh, drummer, the original drummer Angus McLeese had a problem with them getting paid and I think they were going to get paid $75 or something like that for the whole band and he thought that that was selling out and so he refused to play so they had to quick get another drummer who turned out to be Mo Tucker and uh, she became the official original drummer of the band and she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just uh, like the other members. So that's it for Summit High School. We did the complete 360. There's no plaque to commemorate the Velvet Underground playing here. There's no plaque for anything so they shouldn't feel too bad but we were here. Now you can say you've been here. <laughs>